Hello and thank you for tuning into this Angerati Studio interview at Asian Utility Week 2016. My name is Denise and in the studio with me I've got uh, Dr. Yan Ho Shin. Yes. And he's the Deputy Secretary General at the Taiwan Smart Grid Industry Association. Yes. Thank nice. you so much for joining Hello, us. Hello, Denise. Thank you. Um, and um, uh, we will obviously be talking about um, smart grid development. Yes, yes, um, yes. Specifically in Taiwan, but yes. perhaps maybe further abroad. Um, yeah, we'll yeah. Have a, have a discussion around that. So um, uh, let's ask the, the first question. Yes. Um, the smart grids are currently playing a, a, a key role yes. um, in Taiwan sustainable development, um, obviously because they increase power efficiency yes. um, and they, they're obviously cutting usage. Mm -hmm. um, what drove the need for smart grids in Taiwan? Um, today, yesterday is the warmest temperature in the record in Taiwan. Right. You cannot imagine what happened. Uh, in Taiwan, the whole power system, our spinning reserve is only 1.6%. Right. That means we're facing the challenge of the power cutoff now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we need uh, smart grid. I think it's very ob obviously. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yesterday, I think recently, um, Thai Power has called call of all the demand response they, they, they can call. That means they are still looking for more, more and more uh, demand side management. Nice. But uh, fundamentally, in Taiwan, uh, we have a new party, new government in, from last month. And the uh, new party, they, uh, the, the, uh, their policy is quite uh, easy. That means we'll enlarge the usage of renewable energy and all the uh, nuclear power plant will be decommissioned step by yeah. step. Yeah. And uh, we still have a nuclear number four, but I think there will be no chance to operate it. So that will become a very expensive museum in the future. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what are the plans in place currently? Um, in 2011, um, we, we start to doing the so-called uh, Smart Green Master Plan in Taiwan and we go that step by step further and so we also start in uh, the national research program we also have so-called Smart Green Master Plan at that time Taiwan Power Company and uh, our industry, also industry partner and also the academic researcher we work in together in smart uh, customer, smart distribution, and the smart transmission, and also the standard, and also the commercialization of product. And we also identify several demo sites from smart grid, uh, from in the smart, smart grid area. For example, uh, we have uh, uh, in, uh, in the MI and the micro grid, and also from uh, advanced distribution, uh, di Advent distribution automation and also warm system and also the the uh, power quality in high, high transmission level and also the standard research and also the demo site research. Right. Yeah, so we're doing a lot of work prepare for today. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's a really broad um, yes. uh, research, isn't it? Yes, and, yes. Um, a, a rather broad pl plan. Yes. Um, but surely there've been some benefits so far as, of as course, a result of this. Of course. Do you want to um, just yeah, um, yeah, share yeah. this with us? The the most uh, benefit we get is being sure of yesterday because now we have the demand side bidding system. Now all the high level AMI has been uh, implemented, it's been rolled out, so now we, we can call for the demand response now. And uh, the second one is we're working with Taiwan Power System. In Taiwan we still have several remote islands, and uh, in, the, in those remote islands, the fuel cost is very high, and the Thai power working with Earth, we have figured out how to change those remote islands become microgrid. So now they decided to uh, implement a microgrid in all remote islands. So step by step, I think the renewable energy, renewable energy penetration rate yeah. in the uh, remote island will be getting higher. And also, you, um, our new government's uh, target for the renewable energy is about 20 gigawatt in PV and uh, 4 gigawatt uh, offshore uh, wind, wind turbine. But our total capacity is about 42 gigawatt. Yes. So you can see we we will face a lot of challenge, yeah. not only in the distribution grid, 
also in the transmission grid. So we also develop a technology to use the inverter to, um, to, to adjust the active power and the reactive power yeah. so that we can uh, enlarge the capacity of accept more uh, intermittency uh, yeah. in renewable energy in the distribution level. Mm. And yes, that's, that is something we have done now. Fantastic. And um, uh, there's obviously a lot of opportunities yes. that have come about um, yes. as a result of, of these ambitious um, yes. plans in place. But what have been the biggest or the biggest challenge um, that, that um, the association or the country has faced yes. um, you know, reaching these goals that, you, that you've experienced okay. so far? Um, actually, in Taiwan, we're also trying to roll out a smart meter in a low, low, in a normal customer or customer. Mm -hmm. But we face the challenge of the communication problem. Okay. It's very difficult to get a stable communication for the smart meter. So that's why we still uh, put uh, uh, the resources to figure out how to. I think that's also some special case in Asian country because of our design of house and uh, oh. also where we put the meters. Okay. So that's why we are doing this kind of things. And uh, the other challenge will be. Um, how to integrate the small size demand together into the market. Mm -hmm. That is also some challenge we want to overcome yeah. because actually it's very di I Now all the uh, big uh, factory customers, I think they, they, they already joined right. in the demand response program. But uh, in the reality is, uh, is for example, in Taipei City, we, the, the usage of the power per capita is highest in Taipei, but usually they, you, you cannot find a factory in Taipei. You, what is, exists is a commercial usage and the government uh, institute and also the normal uh, residential power usage. So how to gather those small size of demand to become a source or become an adjustable power for the, our power grid will be the next step challenge. So we're working with Taipei government city to figure out how to do this job right, right fantastic. now. Okay. Yes. And um, some of the um, challenges that you are experiencing yes. um, currently, um, do you find that you are possibly finding solutions to these problems um, further abroad, perhaps in Europe or, um, or the States? Or are yes, you drawing yeah. learnings from, from those areas? Or yeah, yeah. Are, are, your, are your challenges so unique to Asia that ah. Uh, uh, there's, there's no okay. there at all? Yes, and because uh, uh, in Taiwan we have developed smart grid technology for I think more than 8 or 10 years and we work with a lot of international partners. So for example now we also have some demo side with the VT, VTT in Finland and also we, uh, we have a lot of uh, um, visit with the European country because some technology is led by European country and we also be happy we also talk to the guy from Czech Republic and uh, but, uh, cooperation is bi-direction so actually uh, we also have some chance to build some micro uh, demo site now in Myanmar and we also um, we are very willing to uh, share our knowledge and our technology to other country, so we can. I, I think tech, uh, micro uh, smart grid technology is could be enjoyed by everyone. Could yes. change the world. So we we, we, we also if that today have a chance, if there anyone who would like to cooperate with Taiwan in this area, we are very happy to visit you and share the knowledge with you. Fantastic. Um, how has smart grid development actually change things um, for Taiwan? Oh, smart grid change a lot. Yeah. It changed the mind from the utility, Taiwan power company. Um, for uh, there's some example I can I can say for example, um, originally um, there's a factory, you know, in Taiwan now PV is very famous now. I think just in Thailand everywhere one talking about a uh, photovoltaic. Yeah. And uh, recently the reality is in Taiwan already that normally if you put the solar on your rooftop yeah. and uh, the, it will be cheaper. For uh, compare with you, you, you buy electricity from the utility. That's yeah. that's it, it's, that's the reality. So recently, my friend who had my my friend who have the factory always asked me, please tell me, I want to use more, more, more 
uh, photovoltaic. How can I do that? Should I put some uh, storage to um, to to keep my uh, power quality? I think that yes, you can try it. That means it, 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 that can enlarge the usage of the the photovoltaic. Yeah. Now, even in the customer side, right. so so uh, I think smart grid will totally change the game rule of the of the of the power industry. Right. And there's something I talked with a time power company recently. I told them that the power generation usage by the customer will be a trend in the future. Okay. Now what they really want to need to think about is the ones they become a they don't sell power anymore. They become a super necessary service provider. What will be changed? What kind of tariff you should be give to the customer? Because that will totally change the game rule. Yeah. That this, I think that will be the challenge of the utility. Yeah, and and I mean not just for Taiwan. Uh, it's really affecting the whole region, isn't it? I mean, do you think that Asia as a whole is on track uh, with smart grid development, or do you yeah. think that there is still uh, quite a few challenges that need to be overcome. Um, especially for the Asian country, I think Asian country grows very fast, their economy, so their energy consumption also grows very fast. Yeah. You can see so many countries, originally they are energy export country, now little by little everyone becomes energy import country. That's right. now, so that will be a big challenge also for the Asian country. So I think smart grid will be the right direction. Sooner or later, uh, all the countries are thinking about to use this technology. But I think their step will be faster, yeah, because uh, because of the the the, the age of uh, renewable energy. Even for renewable energy, working with uh, battery is calm. Right. So I think every country should prepare for this time already. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, what would be your, it, it probably expands on, on what you've just said, but what would be your advice to utilities? Let's focus on the Asian region as a whole. Yes. Uh, what advice would you give them when it comes to smart grid development, especially for those who are just starting out or who are planning large scale smart grid uh, development? Yeah. I think um, for the whole Asian country, uh, they are, of course, they have uh, their, their own character. For example, in Indonesia, you have a lot of islands. And uh, for uh, uh, Thailand, you can still have some connect network with some other country. So that would be better that you, you should, before you push or the, in, the use of the smart grid, firstly, you must make a plan. You must, you, you must uh, see what kind of resources you have and what is the most weak point of, the, of your power system. Yeah. Then you start to use more uh, technology from the smart grid. Then that will bring the largest benefit yeah. for you. So I think make a plan for a smart grid and do that step by step is the most important thing I would like to share with all the utility. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to end that there. Yeah, of course, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much um, you. Uh, for, uh, for coming in, Yen yes. And um, thank you to our viewers for tuning into the session. Uh, if you're wanting some more insight into Asia Utility Week, please have a look at our playlist, which will appear on ngrt.com. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.